educated at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, a man who was part of this whole 1940, 1950s uh, uh, African American connection coming out of the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s, a man who had congregated with some of the black thinkers of the world. Well, when he left the United States, he went back to Africa, built Ghana into a wonderful country, all right? And, and one of the things he was trying to do was promote a United States of Africa. This is in the 1960s. And when he did that, the United States with the CIA, what does, what does the CIA stand for? No, the committee that intervened anywhere. <laughs> That's what it means, all right? And they did that because you have to, because the United States, along with his, her allies, do not want to see a strong Africa. So Gaddafi, he comes up to the United States of Africa like like Kwame Nkrumah. Well, if they have a, a a a European Union, and if there's a United States of America, then why shouldn't there be a United States of Africa? Because as Brother Malik talked about, it breaks up these false boundaries that was developed during a Berlin conference in the mid-19th century. So we're talking about a war on African and African-American and Arab people. A war. And he told you correctly again, for stating the things that he, that he said tonight, all of us who speak out put ourselves in jeopardy. I mean, I've had my run-in with the IRS. I mean, the Christians say their arms are too short to box with God, but your arms are almost too damn short to box with the IRS because they're like always on you, all right? I, 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 I ran for a political office in Orlando. Now, because of my stance and my outspokenness, you would think that I was running for the Senate. All you got to do is pull my name on the, on the, uh, on the, on the internet. And you, they, you see where people have come to my house and tried to fight me, all right? People, in which they pay people to try to do things. You think that I was some type of big mafia hitman, how they treated me and how they characterized me. And that's all because of our views. But the thing that you have in Libya is that it's a microcosm of what they do to a leader, to a state, to an organization that dares defy the rules and the conduct of American society. Remember, the United States is an empire. It became an empire in 1898. When we fought, the United States fought in the Spanish-American War and beat the Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. The United States took over the Philippines Cuba, Puerto Rico, and several other countries. Within that conflict, there was something that came out a few years later called the Platt Amendment that the United States utilizes even today that says that if her interest is affected anywhere in the world, they will go in and intercede or encroach themselves into any country. All right? All they have to do is, is justify it. And that's what's going on now. I think it's also quite interesting what Brother Malik stated about President Obama, all right, and Bobby Rush. Remember when Bobby, when, when President Obama uh, 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 ran against Bobby Rush, the Black Panther, for the Congress uh, a seat in Illinois, Bobby Rush said what? That Obama was a sellout. Now Bobby Rush has become a sellout. That's right. We have very few people now who represent the interest, the real interest of the people at hand. Right now, what they're going to do with Libya, as they did with Iraq, is to partition. That's all what it is, to partition. And when a country is partitioned, it has the people have no sense and no struggle and no fight for self-determinism. Is everything would be dead and gone. So listen, I want you to, to, to read, to understand, analyze. Don't fall into this madness about it's a Republican or a Democratic thing. As long as you do that, you will be out of the mix. You'll be confused. You'll be fighting somebody else's conflict, somebody else's issue. 
we have to think like this, that independent people is under attack. The African world, the black world, the Arab world, any group that defies and wants to challenge American authority is at threat for elimination. What do we need to do with this? We need to broadcast it. We need to support independent leadership and organizations. All of you should be reading and, and, and writing in the Muhammad's, I mean, in the Muslim streets. You need to look at that. Okay, what, what, what paper they have here? The Tampa Herald or something? Tribune. 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 Oh, wow, that's crap. All right. The only thing they have, they're going to talk about in that paper is about some young brother. All right, being put in jail for smoking a joint. That's all. Are they going to talk about somebody beating up somebody for some nonsense? They don't talk about real issues. So we need to support independent thinkers, independent newspapers, the independent media. All right, and challenge the leaders, the so-called leaders, because right now they don't uh, support you. So listen. Um, I want to thank you for allowing me to talk. Um, I want to thank the establishment, establishment again for allowing us to be here. And let's get, let's get busy. We know what to do. Don't talk about what to do. We know what to do. Let's get busy. And uh, Brother Malik says some brothers here from Africa. Yeah. Welcome. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that you're here. Unity. Right. Thank you, Dr. Thank White. You. Thank you, Brother Malik. Okay. Um, Thank uh, Dr. Wayne for uh, uh, At this time, I would like to uh, entertain any questions and answers from our uh, audience as well as uh, the social media. Uh, if you need to uh, any logistics that relates to that, uh, we'll uh, definitely have sure. uh, What's your view on um, um, the, the speculation or you know, I guess the media? You said it's a bunch of garbage. I'm just thinking if, if this part of it is true or not, as far as they're not be attacking his own people or their pockets of Al Qaeda. That could be harboring. You can, oh, literally, could be our harboring. Oh, okay, is there some truth to that? Yeah, you know this. Uh, you know the American government is real slick with this stuff. You know they brought this buzz for Al Qaeda. You know it was the American government which created Al Qaeda in the first place. It was uh, Bin Laden, Osama Bin Laden, who. Uh, you know, America has found itself on different sides of different wars and different interests. And remember, we talked about. Uh, their involvement is strictly based on economic interests, and they will play both sides of that situation. If you look at them financing the, the Mujahideen uh, during the, uh, the Afghanistan Russian thing that was going on there in the late 70s under the Carter administration, uh, that's where uh, Osama bin Laden uh, was playing in the field. It was the United States government that armed them, it was them who then became Al Qaeda. It was the United States government that armed them in the first place. Now they want to turn them into the to the to the boogeyman. It was the George Bush administration, uh, including his father, who were doing big, big oil deals with the very, 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 very rich Bin Laden family out of Saudi Arabia. It was the uh, as you remember on 9/11, uh, all the airspace was shut down for days in the United States. No fly zone, right? Right. Guess who got a plane out of Orlando, Florida? The Bin Laden family out of their mansion. Who gave them the plane? The George Bush uh, 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 administration. I'm, I'm so sick of these games. So, if we get caught into you know, these little word back and forth games of uh, Al Qaeda, Gaddafi talked about Al Qaeda. Uh, he was the first one to talk about, to my knowledge, Al Qaeda in Libya. Because we know, and, and we know that the uh, uh, first, the first part of your question is and was Gaddafi attacking his own people. This is the premise that Barack Obama went into Libya on, right? This humanitarian, like, we're going to put a no fly zone over, et cetera, et cetera. All right? Um, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. If, and we don't know where they got those weapons from, yeah, we do know where they got the weapons from. <laughs> if some rebels showed up in Washington, D.C., with M16s, Uzis, AK-47s, out in front of uh, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue in that White House, right? Let me tell you something. Who, you think that the United States would allow that? You think that any 
uh, uh, police or military uh, uh, framework would allow that? Absolutely.